Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Design the Ultimate Getaway. Uh, welcome to the Tourism Nova Scotia webinar series. Today is Thursday, July 8th. And my name is Nick Fry. I'm the manager of business development with Tourism Nova Scotia. For those of you joining us for the first time, uh, Tourism Nova Scotia is the provincial marketing uh, organization for the province of Nova, Nova Scotia. We market Nova Scotia as a vacation destination and help lead initiatives to grow the tourism industry. COVID-19 and the related travel restrictions have had significant impacts on businesses. And this webinar series is here to offer um, relevant tips uh, and help guide you through the pandemic uh, as we are welcoming visitors again. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, just let you know that we're gonna encourage you to put your Q&A in the bottom. Uh, so don't put it in the chat. If you have any questions, put it in the Q&A and we'll make sure they get uh, answered. We will be providing a link to the webinar. So if you have to run out or, or if, you, if we go over an hour and you have to run out to another meeting, that's fine. It will be available to you um, uh, online afterwards. If you have any questions after the fact, if something hits you, just send it our way. We'll, we'll give you our information. You can send us an email. And uh, it's really uh, encourage you guys to ask any questions uh, throughout. Uh, the best um, webinars we've had are ones where everyone's really engaged. And it's really excited to be able to, to offer this webinar today. So uh, Noelle McGew is the co-owner of Monk and Nun Interiors with her husband, Mika. Uh, they offer unique um, fusion of design, renovation, and short-term rental management. So we're going to get lots of great uh, insights and tips today. Uh, they help uh, property owners um, transform their accommodations into the greatest potential uh, and provide management assistance where needed. Uh, the goal would be to help accommodations providers to increase their bookings uh, and uh, offer excellent guest experiences. And most of their properties are lo located within the Annapolis Valley. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to encourage Noel to join. To also let you know, uh, we also, we do offer um, uh, like live transcripts on the bottom. And if you don't want that, you can simply scroll over your little toolbar at the top or bottom of your screen. You can turn that off, uh, but we do have that on just to help with accessibility, of course. So thank you so much, Noel, and welcome. And I can't wait to hear what you have to tell us. There we go. Thank you so much for uh, the warm welcome and for inviting me here. I'm just going to open my slides here. Um, I'm just so thrilled to be able to present this information to you because I know as well as you guys do that it has been it has been a roller coaster. It has been an up and down time during this pandemic for those of you um, who own accommodations or maybe have been considering starting something. It's an uncertain time, but I just want to be here to encourage you because we've still been successful through that roller coaster. There have been dips, but there's been many highs as well. And I'm here to help you um, make your place stand out because the accommodation, the tourism accommodation can be a, no a noisy world. People who are coming don't necessarily know like uh, where to stay, what the best part of town is. And so they're really looking online. And so that's what I'm here to help you kind of, um, I'm here to help you stand out in a way. So um, thank you so, so much. Uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of introduction, but please um, drop in the chat drop it in the chat like where are you guys from what interested you about being here today um what are you most uh curious about um and i'm just yeah i'm just thrilled to be here i did look at the registration uh kind of seeing where everybody was coming from we're all kind of in this accommodation game differently um so i'll explain um where i'm coming from a little bit but what i want to make clear is i feel like a lot of this information that i'm going to present today is definitely um applicable across the accommodation board when it comes to tourism in nova scotia so um you may have to like um, adjust your mindset around uh, around your accommodation for what I'm presenting because we um, manage short term rentals. So if you have an inn um, or a motel or something like that, you may just have to uh, put my information into that context, but I still feel it's applicable. 
So a little bit about us, Micah and I, I was born in Brookfield, Nova Scotia, um, just outside of Truro, and I was raised there for the first eight years of my life. Uh, then my mom remarried and we moved to Montreal, but we always kept coming home to Nova Scotia because as you know, Nova Scotia, it's hard to keep Nova Scotians away from Nova Scotia. So we would come back for like long weekends and everything. We're always just coming back. So Nova Scotia is a huge part for me. And then, um, you know, I grew up, went to university, met my husband and my husband and I lived in many different provinces. And five years ago, we decided to move back here and uh, raise our family. We have three kids under the age of 10 and raise our family in Nova Scotia. We couldn't think of a better place to do that. The last place we lived was in Alberta and we ran a kid's summer camp there. And when it wasn't summer, it was a retreat center. And over those five years, we found a love. We got so much joy out of hosting people at the retreat center because we realized how much rest and renewal they were getting. And it was so rewarding because if we hosted them well, um, it was kind of life changing. It enabled them to have the rest and renewal that they needed. And so when we moved to Nova Scotia, we wanted to start a, a renovations and design business, but we didn't want to let go of the retreat center vibe, the, the hosting people, the welcoming people, and really providing them with that rest and renewal. So we said, well, let's throw it in there and see what happens. Well, five years later, we're managing uh, 20 this summer, 20 short term rentals, um, and we focus mainly on Airbnb. Um, some of them are on VRBO as well, but we focus mainly on Airbnb because it's a really user friendly platform for homeowners. And so we don't own those 20. We help we help people um, run their short term rentals. And so with our design and renovations combination, we carried that into the short term rental world. And what we've realized is that design um, and that that's what welcomes people really well because you're not always greeting them you're not always showing them around the place you know if it's no matter the accommodation um sometimes it's your staff that's at the welcome desk sometimes uh, but they are opening the door themselves and how can you how can you welcome them best how can you enhance that experience uh and a way and I believe that through the power of design, you can enhance that experience. So we're going to go through some of that today. Um, but that's how we arrived at doing this. And we are just loving it, loving life. We now have a team of seven people helping us here in Nova Scotia because we can't do it all on our own. Um, and so why is this important? To us, it's important, as I just said, to provide people with the rest and renewal. Why is it important to the guests? Because if they feel well cared for, if they aren't worried about this, that, and the other, if they don't have to run out and get something that's missing from your accommodation, then they will, they will have that rest and renewal, and then they will refer your place, and then um, they'll come back time and time again. And that is because they felt cared for more than anything. Um, and why is this important to you? Because if you are providing an excellent guest experience, um, then you are going to get the best return on your investment. And we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we will have an opportunity for Q&A at the end. So get your pens and papers out, um, or you can just type them into the Q&A box there at the bottom of the screen. Um, and we'll address those at the end so that as I'll just go through all of the information that I have for you today. And then um, you can ask anything about anything at the end. Okay, so let's dive in. There are a number of things to consider when designing a space for your guests to stay in. Of course, comfort. You want them to be comfortable. You want them to have the practical things that they need. Do they have what they need? If it's a short-term rental like we manage, um, do they have the types of cooking utensils to, that they need? Do they have the bedding that they need? Um, you want to give them good customer service. You want to provide them with a little bit of wow factor so that you stand out from your competitors. And you want, <laughs> you want them to leave you a good review, of course, because that is something that others will be checking out online. But really what I want to do with you guys today is dive a little deeper. So my goal is to help you 
with designing your place on a shoestring because when people hear the word design, they see dollar signs. And that is not what I'm here to do today. I love using what people have and just rearranging it, decluttering it, minimalizing it, and, um, and just adding a few little pieces. And we'll go through that today to uh, help you design a place that will stand out online and to your guests, but you're doing it on a shoestring. So I'm here for you in that way. Um, the customer wants to have the best customer experience, not just the best customer service. So back here, I talked about you want to provide them with good customer service, but really what the customer is looking for, or your guest in this case, is their experience, their vacation experience. Were they able to really let go of all of the worry and put the stress down, put their work life down and, and have a great experience in their time away from home? Um, and then ultimately, and I know you guys are thinking this, you want the best ROI return on your investment um, with your short term rental um, accommodation. And so I'm here to help you with that. That is my goal for you, um, as well as my goal for the customer um, is just to give everybody the best scenario, the best um, return on their investment. So how will we do this? I want to get rid of all the objections running through your head right now, okay? So I know I hear these objections all the time. So I'm just gonna encounter them face on right now. And you guys, <laughs> you guys may relate to some of them, you may not relate to some of them, but these things, I don't want this mindset stuff to get in the way of the rest of the presentation. So I'm going to um, face them head on. So, um, are you thinking, how will we make the guests over the top happy without breaking our bank? I don't have a budget for this house or this project. How do I do this on a shoestring? I don't have the slightest idea about design. I'm not creative. That's a big one. I want you to throw that out the window right now. I don't know what guests are looking for. And that may be, but I'm here to help you with that. How can I make my place stand out from others? How can this possibly be easy? Well, I'd like to suggest that if we put a little bit of effort into the design and thoughtfulness at the beginning, like right now, starting today, then the rest will be smooth sailing. I've seen it happen time and time again, so I know it's possible for you. All right, so guys, it's time to start sailing. Let's let's get ready, get your pens and paper ready, start taking notes. I know that the replay will be available for this as well. So if you ever wanna go back and rewatch it, you can on the website. Um, but today we're gonna talk about some small items that you can begin to change right now and that will make you stand out in a noisy market. So less is more. You may have heard this old adage before, but it's entirely true. We only want to have in your accommodation what people need. So decluttering is a huge part of it and probably the, the biggest part of this project for you. So I'm going to give you an example about my granddad's cottage. I've shared this with Cindy Wade, who works at Tourism Nova Scotia before when we first met. And I don't know about you guys, but we had a cottage, we have a cottage in Nova Scotia in Bass River and near port pic And it was kind of like when anybody in our entire family, the extended family was done with something, it went to granddad's cottage. So my great grandfather built it. So it had all of the mismatched furniture, tons of different sizes of things, dressers that a TV was on. Um, and I'm making, it, it wasn't actually cluttered. It just had everything, everybody's discards basically. And so, um, you know, nothing matched. The, the, the cupboards in the kitchen were just chock full to the top and they were super high. And I don't even know what was on the top shelves, you know? And so, when we're renting out a place, we don't want that type of granddad's cottage feel. People don't want to be walking into your belongings. And so even if it is a, a family cottage that you've rented out, I ask you guys to depersonalize it a little bit and really consider just what do people need while they're there um, versus like, this is a great place to store things. 
So I wanna just, um, in Atlantic Canada, I think this is a great example. It's not in Nova Scotia and it's a recent project that was just completed, but these are the fish sheds. I don't know if you've heard of them, they're in Newfoundland. And so uh, this couple, kind of like Micah and myself, I haven't met them yet, but they just bought these five um, old fishermen's sheds. And I don't know what they first looked like. I wonder if there's a blog on that or something, but they completely just pared it down. They minimalized it. They painted everything white and they only put back in what they felt their guests would absolutely need. So this is the result. I don't have a before picture for that. So let's talk about less is more in the bedrooms and the bathrooms. So what I want you to think of with these two areas in particular is to think of a hotel when it comes to the bedrooms and the bathrooms. When you walk into a hotel, everything's really quite crisp. You feel like it's been really clean and it's real, it really only has what people need. Um, I suggest personally, and people have different opinions on this, but I kind of stick to my guns on this one because it's gonna help you. I suggest white linens because they're easy to clean. They're easy to bleach if needed because you have a lot of turnover going on. At least we want you to have a lot of turnover going on and they're super easy to replace. So if you had, um, when I say easy to replace, if you had like a floral um, bed set and um, one of the pillows got stained, well then you couldn't just go out and replace that one pillowcase. You'd have to replace the whole set. Um, or you would have a mismatch set. And we want to avoid both of those things. And so really, if everything just matches, it makes it easier for your cleaners, um, not just to clean, but to just grab the right size, you know, and they're not digging around, they're not wasting time looking for what goes with what. Um, but it's just kind of easy if everything's uniform. So and it's e much easier to clean, um, easy to um, to put stain remover on and things like that. Uh, same goes for like face cloths and things like that. Um, so adding in some extra throws. This is important because people may get cold. So you'll you'll notice that like in a hotel room, usually up on the on the top shelf of the closet, that there'll be like a warmer blanket. Um, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to throws. Just so each bedroom has an extra an extra blanket in case, because we're all different <laughs> internal temperatures. So in case somebody um, is a little chilly. So um, conversely to that fans, because, you know, it can get, it can get warm in Nova Scotia at times. And so this is something I've learned the hard way and had to go out, you know, as a guest is staying there to provide them with a fan. Sometimes, you know, the heat pump isn't cutting it or the ceiling fan isn't cutting it. Um, and they'd really just, they want a fan. So I tried to provide at least one, depending on the size of the accommodation, um, one to four fans, just like the stout ones um, that can sit on a dresser or whatever. And I just tuck those away in a closet. Um, that way, if anything does happen or the condenser of the heat pump that's happened to us before is broken, I can just point them to where the fans are and that tides them over um, and keeps them somewhat cool until, um, until we can fix the heat pump. So I also suggest that there's four pillows per bed minimum. Um, this is because everybody has a different comfort, comfort level when they sleep. And so if there's just two pillows, some people don't feel like a couple wouldn't feel like that was enough. So that is what I suggest. And that does not include the cushions, um, like the decorative pillows that go on. This is really f sleeping pillows. Um, you do not need to supply products. You don't many people feel like they need to have like body wash or like shampoo from Costco and things like that. You don't necessarily need to do that. In fact, I feel like some guests feel like that's helpful. It's about a 50 50 split. Some guests feel like that's helpful and other guests feel like that's kind of gross because other people have been using it. And so um, you don't need to supply those kind of things. People usually travel with them. Um, you do need to supply hand soap, of course, things like, um, okay, so we're just talking about the bathrooms. I was going to say dish soap, but hand soap for the bathrooms, toilet paper, paper towel, and a couple of cleaning products like under the sink, like an all a multi-purpose cleaner, something like that. Um, 
we're going to talk about added value later on, but toiletries would be an added value and they need to be done really well. So again, we're not talking about kind of like this sloppy bottle that tons of people have used. We're talking more about like um, the mini ones that you can buy at Walmart or at the dollar store. And if this is something you want to do, then you need to budget that in as your added value. And we are going to be talking about what the added value looks like later, but right now we're going to stay concentrated on decluttering. I just wanted to let you guys know that you don't need to have those items, um, depending on your accommodation. If you are here visiting, uh, like listening to this and you own a motel, um, then maybe in your industry that is standard. If that's standard for you, then by all means, but I'm talking about for us in short-term accommodations or even in bed and breakfast, I don't feel like um, those are necessary. All right, moving on to the kitchen. So um, if you have a kitchen space, and I know this isn't necessary for everybody, but it's e it could even be a kitchenette in your short-term accommodation, um, we suggest that you provide minimal spices. So this is things like salt, pepper, um, sugar, uh, isn't a spice, but you know, um, if you wanted to add like some oregano and basil, then that would be okay too. But I wouldn't even suggest like a full spice rack because what's gonna happen is you're going to have like the paprika that's super hardened or these things that people aren't gonna use and it just ends up looking messy and dusty and kind of um, unappealing. And so really just things that you can easily replace, easily refill um, and things that are used quite frequently for the masses like basil and oregano and salt and pepper. Uh, cooking utensils, often these come, like the standard cooking utensils, larger cooking utensils will often come in a pack of what people use the most. So I suggest that people buy those. Um, a set of cutlery is really ideal versus a mit mismatch um, bunch of cutlery. Uh, people have commented on that before, believe it or not. I know a fork is a fork is a fork, but people want to feel like they're getting what they paid for. And so if you would like to increase, um, if you would like to increase your nightly rate, and it's only about buying like a set of cutlery for $20, then I would say um, it's worth, it's worth that. It's worth purchasing that um, so that you could up your nightly rate so your house looks very organized and, and streamlined. Uh, cutting boards are important for you because we don't want people cutting on your countertops or your tabletops. Um, and more than one cutting board, I would say, like uh, two to three. Glasses, wine glasses are important as well. Mugs, dinnerware. Um, how much? That's a question that I often get. How, how many dishes should we be providing? And so if your accommodation uh, sleeps four people, then I would say have maybe six of everything. Four of everything seems a little sparse, right? But if you had like six to eight of everything, then they don't have to wash their cup every time they use it um, in case it's in the dishwasher or whatnot. So, but I would not just fill it with dishes either. So you want to really streamline it, really bring it down. So, so not more than double the amount of guests that can stay there. I wrote a set of pots and pans. This is one thing that, um, you know, they are more expensive, it's true, um, but it really does show care for the client, for the guests, if you um, if you have a set of pots and pans and you can get them at like Canadian Tire and stuff and Canadian Tire always has really good deals of set, sets of pots and pans. So we often send um, our short-term rental owners there or I go for them uh, to Canadian Tire because they're always like, I don't know, 25, 50% off. You can just watch in the flyer and kind of grab them when they're, when they're on sale, but they have really good quality. They'll last a long time. Oftentimes it's the stoneware kind of ones. Um, a coffee pot is incredibly important. Some people use the Keurigs. I'm not that keen on it because then you always have to replace the Keurigs. Whereas with a coffee pot, like a drip uh, coffee pot, then, um, 
then they just kind of have to bring their own coffee. You can provide filters for them if it's necessary, but you can also get the coffee pots that have the reusable washable filters. And that's probably best because then you don't have to be thinking about, do I need to replace the filters all the time? Um, a kettle is also important. I would leave the fridge bare. This is a question I often get. So even if you have, um, you know, a motel or an inn and it has a mini fridge in there, I would definitely leave it bare and very clean. If you want to provide some waters in there, that's always nice and refreshing when people first come in. But aside from that, I wouldn't leave things like ketchup and butter and margarine and everything like that. Um, it just, it feels a little bit, it feels, um, I don't know, like somebody else was there and you really want them to feel like this is their experience. And it's not, um, that feeling is not then being taken away from by them feeling like, oh, there's some crummy butter or whatever in the fridge. Okay. Um, so it is nice to have a few added value pieces in the kitchen, like coffee. It can be instant coffee. Um, instant coffee stays fresh a lot longer than regular coffee. Other clients of ours have like the, the tins of coffee, like the Kirkland brand or whatnot. And that stays fresh for a pretty long time. Um, teas, just like Red Rose or King Cole teas. Uh, you can also have some boxes of herbal teas. They stay, stay fresh for a long time. Sugar packs, as I mentioned before, I will highlight the packs. You don't just wanna have a sugar jar because then it'll get clumpy and hard. And again, especially during COVID, like it's just better to not share those kind of items. So uh, sugar packs and they don't go bad, um, just like in a jar or a dish or something like that. And then creamer, I wouldn't provide them with milk, but you could have uh, coffee made or something just in case they forgot their milk and they they decided to go grocery shopping after the first day that they arrived um, but they wanted a cup of coffee before they went and did that that's a really nice uh, thing for them to have but again I would keep it really minimal if you want to provide some kind of treats and stuff like that you could have like some popcorn and you know packs of, packs of popcorn or oatmeal or something like that that's individual packs um, but really uh, frame your mind around having those individual packs and not just something that people are sharing from one guest to the other. Um, a table that fits in the space. So, and the amount of chairs of your maximum capacity. So if, if you sleep two, then you don't wanna have like a massive table taking up tons of room. It really does attribute to the minimalist feel if you just have the amount of chairs that people um, are sitting at. If, if it sleeps two and you wanna have like a small table with four chairs, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm talking more about the size of the table. Like you don't want a massive table taking up all of this room um, if there's, you know, only two or four people able to stay there. Um, so if this, if this kitchen scenario does not apply to you directly, um, here are some other ideas of how you could help them with the kind of uh, area of food and, and nourishing themselves. So where can they eat locally? Um, if you have a kitchen like at, at, or you have a bed and breakfast, like what is your menu? Um, what is the menu of nearby restaurants? Could you provide them with that? Um, like the takeout menus? Uh, where could they get healthy options? I always try to include um, something that would accommodate any dietary restrictions as well. So I'm in Kentville, Nova Scotia, and in Canning, there's a gluten-free restaurant where everything is gluten-free. So I often put that down because more and more people are gluten-free and it's in this area. So, and it's, it's quite a nice restaurant. So um, I always add that one, but um, just kind of thinking like, how, how would that make the, the guest feel cared for? Because if they're away from home, they may not know where to eat. They know they may need suggestions. And if you provide, provide that for them, um, then they will definitely feel cared for. Let's talk about the living room for a second. So you want the, the seating to be comfortable. You want it to be able to accommodate um, different sizes of people. So keep that in mind as you're choosing furniture or replacing any furniture. You also don't want it to be too much and you'd like it to be well organized. I'm going to show you some examples of that in a minute. So can fit, consider the amount of people staying. So how many people, same as the kitchen table, how many people would need to um, 
how many chairs or sofas would you need for people to be comfortable in the space in the living area? And do not clutter it like granddad's cottage. Just because you have a chair doesn't mean it should necessarily, necessarily go into your short-term rental. Does it fit there? Does it, does it go with the decor? Would it be a comfortable chair for people to sit in? Is it, is it the right size um, for the room and for um, you know, a number of, a, a range of sizes of people too? Um, an optional item would be a pullout sofa and this can increase your nightly rate. So if you have two bedrooms, um, if you have two bedrooms, like two queen beds in there, but you have a pullout sofa that could then accommodate a family of five and and otherwise they may not have chosen your place because there's only room for four people to stay um, or that, you know, it could be. I'll just leave it at that. It can increase your nightly rate because then you could say we can accommodate five or six people um, because you have the pullout sofa. Whoops. So throw blankets as well in the living room, also important. TVs are not necessary. Um, some people do like TVs, but we have a number of accommodations that don't have a television in them. Um, especially the water side ones. Some people, some homeowners just think that people should come and relax. So I leave that up to the homeowners. So it's up to you. Um, but we haven't, you know, we do mark it down if there is a TV or if there isn't a TV on the listing. So people know once they're coming in, but we haven't had any complaints about uh, there being no TVs where there aren't any. Um, cushions, cushions. Um, can do wonders. And so um, you don't want too many, I would say like two per sofa, one per chair, um, less is more again. So in the pandemic, I have to let you guys know, this is incredibly important to note that high speed Wi-Fi and a desk area has become way more important for our guest um, experience. And so um, if you have a lot of people like we are, we've been renting out month long stays in our short term rentals because um, people are just exploring a different area of Nova Scotia, but they do need to work during the day. Um, so that has become a common question for us. So if you haven't yet considered that, this is a, this is a new world and people are traveling, but they're working at the same time. Um, and so you may want, want to uh, accommodate something small for them to be able to set up their laptop and whatnot. And then again, um, Wi-Fi has become incredibly important for our guests as well for the same reasons. So um, I'll talk about this more in the added value area, but you can have some books on the table about the area. That would be a great added value place, uh, a great added value item in the uh, living room or any kind of you know, we have one one place that has like a little wall in their living room, uh, just a little cubby kind of thing. And it has um, information about things that you can do in the area. They got brochures and things like that and the Wi-Fi information's there and things. So they just kind of set up this little board um, for people to refer to if they were looking to do anything in the area. Okay, so now that you've decluttered, whew, <laughs> now that you've decluttered, it's time to freshen it up. So, um, and you can do this on a shoestring. I will give you some examples of this. Um, paint goes a long way. A $30 can of paint can go an incredible um, way. And so an example for me is like when I started working on Zoom more because of the pandemic, um, this was not white, <laughs> but I needed a fresh background. So I just went out and got some white paint and painted my office white. Um, actually, this wasn't even my office before the pandemic hit. So <laughs> I had to have a home office. So I, I made this and I wanted it to be bright and light and airy and really um, be accommodating to who I am as a person and also to my brand. And I did that all with $30 and a can of white paint. So white paint goes a long way. I know people are like, oh, white is so boring. I hear that all the time. So if that just went through your head, I caught you. <laughs> but um, there, there's ways to bring in pops of color. You know, tea towels, 
you can get a red kettle uh, and a red coffee maker, or you can uh, put beautiful artwork on the wall that will stand out way more against a white backdrop. And this way, if anything gets scuffed, it's just super easy to paint over. You're not color matching and all of this stuff. So <clears throat> um, artwork is a great way. I'm gonna show you guys examples. I think it's on the next slide. Artwork is a great way to freshen a space and to make it feel um, more robust and like you really put uh, effort into this space. And so there are so many amazing local artists. And to give you a bit of a tip, some local artists will want their artwork on display. And so if you're open to it, you can even reach out to someone you know that you like their art or like a local artist that you've heard of. And you can ask them if you could hang it in your short term accommodation with their card beside and maybe a price point on that painting. And they could even sell the artwork through you and your accommodation. And that is a great way not only to um, contribute to the local economy and support our local artists, but also um, also to shine up your place, right? So it's kind of this win-win, uh, mutually beneficial relationship. Um, updating the hardware. If you're dealing with an uh, you know, old dresser or an old kitchen or an old door, even a front door. Updating your hardware is a really cost effective way um, to make it feel more modern. For instance, right now, um, black hardware, matte black hardware is very in. You can get black matte hardware at Ikea. You're going to start hearing me talk about Ikea a lot for like $2 or something for a package. Um, they may not be the highest quality, right? But I've had no trouble with them. You know, the next level up would be like the Richelieu brand at Home Depot, you know, $5 for a pole or something like that. But these are, these are ways that you can really modernize your accommodation and make it feel like you've uh, make it feel to the guests like you've, you're with the trends, you've put some effort into it. Um, and you know, it would take a couple hours to like unscrew the old hardware, put on the new hardware, and then uh, it really would update your kitchen. So uh, black matte hardware, brass hardware is also very popular right now, but even if it's just, you know, a dated shape or something, you could still go with, you know, the chrome poles or whatnot. Whoops. Um, furniture, take an assessment, like walk through as a guest or get a friend to come with you or get you know a cousin or a neighbor or somebody to walk through and say like what would you guys be thinking if you were staying here if you paid to stay here how much would you pay to stay here as it as the current space um and then ask them does anything need replacing um and you probably know does the mattress need replacing if the mattress doesn't need replacing i recommend that you try to sleep there for a night i always recommend to our homeowners that they try to sleep in their own accommodation for a night because that's when you're going to realize what's missing what's uncomfortable and what really needs replacing or maybe you just need to replace the bedding right so duvets and duvet co covers um, are they're easier to wash than quilts um, because then you just keep the duvet on you strip the duvet color cover rather you wash it with the sheets. Um, you know you can get duvet covers at Ikea from I don't know 20 to $100 each. Um, and so the $20 ones are probably on the cheaper end, but you do want to get something um, that's easy to wash and easy to dry. Again, I would stick with white. Um, and then you can just, you know, put a colorful throw. If you don't want your room to be all white, you can put a colorful throw along the bottom of the bed. Um, and I'll show you that in an example of a house that we staged this week. Cushion covers. Oh, I meant to grab one. Cushion covers. So you can get $5 cushions at Ikea, the inserts, and then you get the cushion covers. And I love the ones that are $5. They come in all colors of the rainbow. You can change out the colors when you get bored. You can change out the colors for the season. Um, but they have really amazing options for next to nothing at Ikea. I highly recommend that you use cushion covers so that when your cushions wear, all you're doing is replacing the covers um, and you're not having to go out and spend another $40 on cushions again. 
Okay, here's an example of a house that we staged this week. So we have a staging portion of our business and I just grabbed these. I also want to let you guys know that um, there are no filters on here. I'm going to be talking a lot about photos after or I'm going to mention about photos after. These are just taken with our stagers um, cell phone. And I just this is the same room. So this is the before picture here. Um, and I just want to kind of show you the artwork, take note, right? Like we replaced the um, bedside tables because they were a little large for the space and they made this closet door feel really cramped. Um, so we replaced them with smaller bed, um, bedside tables, nightstands. We enlarged the artwork. We just put a country type throw. This is a log cabin. Obviously we put a country type throw over a white duvet. We put five pillows on the bed and an area rug underneath. Totally minimalist. We didn't even, um, we didn't even replace many things. We reuse these lamps you'll see in the next photo. So we didn't just discard the things um, that were in there. We reuse them in other areas of the home. So just kind of think about how you can um, maybe theme or bring together your items uh, for each space. And maybe that looks like shuffling things around a little bit. So again, these are just like cell phone pictures, no filter. We would typically present better photos, but for this scenario, I just really wanted to show you guys, um, I wanted you to pay attention to the changes, like the before and after. And, and I feel like we would lose that if I had a filter on the photo, um, because then it would be very much, very obvious that it was brighter and, um, and better, so. These are just the raw pictures. So here's another example. This was done yesterday or the day before. Um, you see the doggy on the bed, but they had one bedside table. This was just like a spare room in the basement. Um, but again, we lightened up the linens, um, added some throws, had some matching um, lampshades to match the pillows, and then added some artwork above the bed, added, added some um, like a little fur and a carpet here. Uh, the bed didn't change. We just changed out the bedding and then we brought down one of the bedside tables from upstairs so that it, it balanced it out a little more. So again, like this, this probably was updated, I want to say for uh, under $200. So this was a spare bedroom that was being used um, just as kind of a storage area. There was a chair with some books and some CDs. Um, and so we updated it into a bedroom. Again, the pictures are a little dark, but we put this tray, a candle, a book about Nova Scotia, uh, a little towel. And then um, these are the lamps from the other bedroom. And we just used the um, a couple other matching uh, nightstands that were already in in the home but we kind of had a blue nautical theme for this room this is the before of the living area there was a great big try to take it of the same uh, same angle here but there was a great big sofa here um, and then the door was kind of here on the right hand side so we felt like as soon as you came in you saw a sofa um, so this is the updated version. We turned the downstairs bedroom into a TV room so that we took the TV out. We really wanted to display these beautiful windows in this log home. So you can really see the difference. Again, they just had this, they had a couch cover on there um, because because of the dog. So this is actually the same sofa. We didn't even bring in a new sofa. And if you remember, this chair was in the spare bedroom. So we just merely rearranged it, threw some cushions on there, added some a floor lamp and a rug and a different shape of coffee table. Um, so again, a very uh, quick update there, but it made a big difference. Okay, so now that we've taken things out and added in back in what we would like to make it nice and a nice clean aesthetic, um, now it's time for the wow factor, which is the added value. Um, so 
another way to think of this is like a little treat for your guests. So some examples that we do are welcome booklets. We actually print them on like this linen paper. Um, it's just a little bit extra, right? Than printing it on the computer, but I send them to a print shop to make them feel nice. Um, and that that welcome booklet has items like what you should, what you could do in the area, any kind of like quirks about the house, the Wi-Fi password, all of, all of the things that they will need to know so that they have a comfort comfortable stay that also streamlines it so we get less phone calls about where's this where's that what can I do and all of that I try anything I can think of I try to put into the welcome booklet or the welcome note so when they book our place I send them a welcome note um, that describes things they can start looking up to plan their itinerary for their trip and things like that and then when they arrive there's a welcome booklet um, information about the local attractions and some of our accommodations we have just gone to the Wolfville Information Center and gathered a bunch of brochures and kind of have them in a nice little stand so that people can go through those and um, see you know if they wanted to go to the Oakland Farm Zoo or um, they wanted to go to different wineries or anything like that we try to really accommodate for families as well as couples that may be coming on a wine tour in the valley and stuff like that so really just um, bringing them into what your area has to offer. If there's local farmers markets, that's always a hit. Anything historical, that's always a hit. Um, anything waterfront is great. Um, but adding, bringing in that information and you can go to the Tourism Nova Scotia info centers and they will help you. They have helped us in Wolfville anyway, put together um, those packages. So uh, they're there to help. Uh, discount vou vouchers from local businesses, otherwise known as a coupon, right? So discount vouchers can go a long way because then you are promoting local businesses, so they will gladly give them to you. Um, and then you're pouring into the local economy again, um, and then it gives your guest something to look forward to, something to do, um, and they will feel honored that you left that from them. So some of the wineries around here will give us like a voucher for 15% off and things like that um, of their store or of their tour or whatever. So you can start thinking about that and that that's of no cost to you, but it is it is a good partnership and community builder. Uh, candy dishes, of course, uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, some of our locations, not all of them, but they have a lot of um, vineyards around them, a lot of wineries. And so they've partnered with local um, wineries to actually provide a bottle of wine. That's probably the highest end gift that we have is a bottle of wine and um, a bag of covered bridge chips. And so that you know those would be for our higher end accommodations but you know the option is there look around you like who can you partner with who do you know that owns another business do you have a soap making company near you um you know who is kind of around you that would love to get in on this um and provide your guests with a sample of what they do that's a great way to add value um, both to their lives and to your guests experience local goods are always appreciated. The guests love local goods. And then oftentimes they'll invest in going to that place and finding out more about it and then and buying more products as well. So listing your place, I told you guys we'd talk about photos a little bit. Listing and advertising your short term accommodation is just as important as listing a house. And some people don't understand the, the importance of photos in listing a house either but staging your place so that people feel at ease, people feel like they can rest there, people feel like they want to stay there is so, so, so important. Professional photography, I believe is so important too. I used to try to take pictures with my iPhone because iPhones have a good camera, but I've, I quickly learned, I quickly turned around that I wanted a professional photographer to come in and edit the photos because they'll stand up on chairs. They have a different brain. They stand up on chairs, they squat down, they get these cool little shots and these little angles and they zoom in on things and their lenses are amazing. And so um, it's really worth it. And why is that? Why is it worth it? Because people are going to be um, people are going to be opting into your location. They're going to be booking your location because of the photos. That's what they're looking at. And I would, I would, um, 
I would bet that it is just important if those photos are just important for your booking, if not more important than your location. Your location might be more important if they have family in your area, but if they're just coming as tourists, I would say your photos are what is selling your place. And so um, this is one thing that I'm quite passionate about, if you can't tell, is make the investment on the photos after it's all done. That is what it, yeah, the photos is what will sell um, your accommodation, I believe. So if you're going to invest in advertising and marketing, that is a great place to do it. Um, the investment in this area is um, anywhere, depending on the photographer I use, and I use different photographers for different things. Um, the investment is anywhere between $75 per listing um, to $200 per listing. Um, and so that's what you can kind of look at. I know that's a bit of a range, but you can, you can go on to local photographers and look at the types of pictures they do. I would highly recommend that you choose someone that has experience in taking pictures of houses or real estate um, because they know what they're doing. They know which angles that they need to take from and they have the proper lens. If you're in the Valley, I can recommend a couple. <laughs> Okay, guys, so this is just um, skimming the surface. If you would like some coaching um, to, or to talk to me or to learn more about this, there are a few different ways that we as a business can help you out. Um, the tourism and demand is back up. I don't know if you guys saw that pick up last week, but I certainly did in the short-term rental. Now that phase three is here, we, um, we are cooking with gas and and tourism is happening again and we want to see you guys succeed by standing out from other listings. So a couple ways that we can help you is I do have an Airbnb 101 kickstart and run course. Um, this is the only part that's really pertinent for Airbnb. I do that's in the module one. I do take people through the foundations of setting up their Airbnb account from start to finish. I'm training someone live on there and I recorded it. Um, so you can see I'm setting up an actual listing on there. So you can just go and do yours at the same time and pause and, um, and, and do yours and then press play again if that's how you learn best. Um, but the rest of them are really pertinent to all kinds of short term uh, accommodations. So if you would like uh, more information or to really have like this type of training or coaching, um, it is a do at your own pace course. There's about six, approximately six hours on there of training and that's available on our website. It goes through things like the foundations of listing your property, design, photography. So one of our photographers actually goes on and does a guest uh, speaker feature and she goes through everything that she does to take photos. Um, same with pricing and added value. There's different platforms that you can actually use to see if you, to do some kind of market research. So we really dive deep in this course. Um, we have a whole section on added value and what you can do, different ideas, um, theming and branding your spaces, um, how to promote your spaces, where to do that. And then we have a little bit on um, what to do during COVID and some resources that you can use. So that is that course. We also do consulting and have different services. So we do staging consultations if that interests you. We also do design consultations. I do phone consultations if you're not in the Valley and you just kind of want to like process this with someone, I'm happy to spend some time with you um, and do that. And then we also, of course, have a full service design and staging where we come in and do it for you. So what I want to leave you with is that you guys have got this. I know I just kind of fire hosed you with a ton of information, um, but to break it all down really simply is you want to attract the guests by the photos, declutter and stage it and then shoot, meaning with a the camera, <laughs> then lend some wow factor to the guests upon arrival so that they're like, wow, they thought of me. Wow, this is so nice, you know? Um, provide comfort and great guest experience. So a lot of that is communication, having yourself set up well beforehand. And I believe if you do these three things, you'll be able to increase your nightly rate, have great reviews, have some referrals, so they'll send their friends and you'll have repeat customers. 
So now it's time for Q and A. If you guys have any questions for me. Well, that was uh, really, really a lot of great information. Um, just one thing I wanted to say, if, uh, if anybody here uses these tips and we just sent it over, over the chat, but if anybody uses these tips to take you know, a, a better photo than what they are currently have, just make sure you remember to send it into uh, our group, North Nova Scotia, uh, so we can have it on novascotia.com. Of course, whenever we um, market, we always drive everyone to our website. So you wanna make sure you have your best foot forward there when, when you're presenting your, your property. So um, we'll share that information uh, after the fact. Um, does anybody else have any um, Q and A questions? Uh, they wouldn't have the answers if it was a question. So any cues. And um, I think what's important is that um, a lot of this information Noel, will be um, available on the recorded webinar. And I, and I can just uh, imagine a lot of my colleagues at Torres Nova Scotia sharing this with you know the different properties and I'm so glad that it's available to them. A lot of really great tips. Those photos look so much, um, so much better um, with your with your minor tweaks. Uh, okay, we have one question coming in. Any requirements for smart tech? For example, keypad entry, automated exterior lights. Sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Could you repeat it? Any requirements for smart technology, like keypad entry, automated exterior lights, things like that? Yeah, so I, yeah, I would really leave this up to you. If you're, if you're into that and that would make your life easier, then hands down, I mean, keyless entry is definitely the way to go if you're ready to make that investment for your place because then there's no chance of losing the key. Um, so we definitely love our places with the keyless entry. We haven't had any trouble with that. Um, we also use lock boxes. People don't tend to lose the key. I always also hide a key <laughs> in case, uh, just in case, right? And we always have a copy on ourselves too. Um, as far as like the remote um, adjustments go, I... I don't usually, I don't have anybody that does lighting, but I do have somebody that adjusts the temperature. Um, so they're in Ontario and they adjust the temperature from there uh, when a guest is coming. So that's definitely helpful. Um, and it saves me a trip. And what they just decided was like, it's, it's actually more cost effective for them to do that from home and have the system than it is for me to run up and down to Halls Harbor to adjust the heat before someone comes in. Right. So what about things like, like Bluetooth speakers and things like that? Would you call those kind of added, added value? Um, yes, I okay. would. Yeah. Oh, not a question, just a comment. Thanks, Noel. Amazing session. That's great. Oh, okay. uh, well, that, and that was from one of our, um, one of uh, my colleagues that works directly with businesses. So I know that this just adds to our tools and resources that we can share with industry. Um, Somebody else agreed, very helpful. So that's wonderful. I think what we'll do is we will stop there unless we get any more questions. I should also <laughs> just add Nick, that I didn't, I didn't add, if anybody is interested in talking more or um, all of that information I shared kind of about what we do and the course and everything is on our website, which is monkandnun.com. It's spelled okay. out monkandnun.com, yeah. Okay, and we'll share that out as well. Cool, so thank I you. Will take back over my screen here. Perfect. So thank you again for everyone joining us today. That was a wonderful presentation and just so excited to, to see what Noel uh, was able to, to show us. There. And a lot of really relevant, great information. So um, we'd love for you to join us for our next webinar, uh, Videography, Bringing Your Life, Bringing New Life to Your Social Media Presence. That's going to be Thursday, August 5th at 10 o'clock, of course, be delivered by Rove Productions. So that's going to be a great webinar. And any webinar that 
all the webinars that we've already offered are available online at uh, tourismns.ca slash webinar dash series. So I should uh, encourage you to join the, um, check those out. So stay in connected with us. Uh, our consumer website is novascotia.com. That's where we, all of our marketing encourages people to come check out what's available. Contact, contact us at business development if you have any ideas or if you have any questions on the webinar today, ensbusiness at novascotia.ca. Sign up for our in touch newsletter. So that's where we talk about any of our announcements, new funding programs, new um, marketing programs, new anything we may have. The webinars will all be there. I encourage you to follow us um, at Tourism NS. Uh, LinkedIn, we're at Tourism NS. Corporate website is tourismns.ca. And we have a really robust uh, resource section on COVID 19, and that's tourismns.ca slash coronavirus. Thank you all for joining us, and we hope you can join us on August 5th for our next webinar. Have a wonderful day.